You see this, the IPCC official. This is the International Panel on Climate Change. You know, these are the guys who make up all this stuff about uh, a third of the world's population. They're going to be without water because all the glaciers are going to melt by 2025 and all this nonsense. Uh, the, uh, uh, an IPCC official, Otmar Edenhofer, gave an interview to uh, New Zürcher Zeitung, uh, and um, he was talking, uh, he's talking about really uh, the massive redistributive element uh, in climate policy, because climate policy is supposedly uh, a way uh, to, uh, to transfer wealth from first world countries all the way uh, to, to other countries. Now, he's actually come clean. Uh, he, he says, this is how he puts it, first of all, developed countries have basically expropriated the atmosphere of the world community. Did you even know that was possible? This is 21st century colonialism. We don't take the land anymore, we take the air above the land. Uh, so one must say clearly that we redistribute de facto the world's wealth by climate policy. Obviously the owners of coal and oil will not be enthusiastic about this. One has to free oneself from the illusion that international climate policy is environmental policy. This has almost nothing to do with environmental policy anymore, with problems such as deforestation or the ozone hole, unquote. So this is IPCC official Otmar Edenhofer giving the game away by saying that uh, so-called environmental policy is nothing to do with saving the environment anymore. That was a useful, it's not, forget about stuff like deforestation, the ozone hole, uh, the carbon levels and all the rest of it. It's not about that. It's about taking money from the part of the world that functions uh, and, giving it, uh, and giving it to everybody else. So in other words, it's a redistributive uh, racket. Um, the, the environment is an amazing thing. It's the, it's the most ingenious pretext for big government ever devised. And not on a state level and not on a national level, but on the global level. Because everything's in the environment. Uh, every, what isn't in the environment? You know, government transport policy is about transport and government agriculture policy is about agriculture. But government environmental policy is about everything because everything's part of the environment. Your town, your county, your planet, and of course you. Which is why, as we've discussed on this show before, we have things like uh, Cheryl Crow demanding limits on on how many sheets of toilet paper you can use and uh, and and the guys who want to ban two ply toilet paper which would devastate the Canadian economy because, of course, the uh, Canadians are the house of Saud of two ply toilet paper, and uh, and and this this is uh, this would be totally devastating to the Canadian economy. Uh, but but they're getting le more less and less. Uh, coy about telling us what's really behind it. Do you know Thomas Friedman, the great big thinker at the New York Times? He, he writes these, these love letters to China every, every week or two. And he pines, he, he bemoans the fact that the United States is not like China. It cannot just get the job done. It cannot just decide what we need to do and do it because we suffer from the defect of, of, of being a republic uh, with el uh, elected uh, legislators who are accountable to the people. And you'd have no idea how that, how messy that, that awful, horrible democratic republic stuff can be when you need, where you urgently need to get the, the stuff done. So Thomas Friedman writes these objectively disgusting and uh, totalitarian love letters in the New York Times every couple of weeks where, where he, to use his phrase, he says, why can't we be China for a day? In other words, why can't for one day a year the United States be governed by a totalitarian politburo that could just pass all the environmental laws we need and get the job done uh, in a day? And I think you're, you're going to see a lot more of that as they're panicking. They've had the worst year in their lives, the environmental movement, since the leak of the uh, East Anglian emails and all the rest of it and that what what and the Copenhagen conference turned out which was actually an embryo world government they wanted to set up there and it, we were, should be very grateful that it was the Brazilians the Indians and the Chinese who saved the Western world from basically driving itself off a cliff um, the they're becoming less and less shy about the uh, the the essentially anti-democratic uh, totalitarian thinking uh, behind behind the environmental uh, behind the environmental movement uh, so because everything's in the environment 
the environment is basically the biggest pretext for big government ever devised in the world. And this guy from the IPCC uh, comes out and says, it's not about the environment. You know, quote, one has to free oneself from the illusion that international climate policy is environmental policy. This has almost nothing to do with environmental policy anymore, unquote. It's just about big government for its own sake. You know, their annual, their annual Monday uh, night poker game in hell I would bet Stalin, Hitler, and Mao are kicking themselves. You know, oh, it's about leaving a better planet to our children. Why didn't, why didn't we think of that? Uh, no jackboots, no goose steps, just a soft and easy, incremental, fluffy totalitarianism all the way. It's, it's about big government on a scale never yet seen, and every so often uh, the mask uh, drops. Uh, when the chips are down, says Mayor Hillman, senior fellow at the Policy Studies Institute in London, quote, I think democracy is a less important goal than is the protection of the planet from the death of life, the end of life on it. This has got to be imposed on people whether they like it or not, unquote. Who needs Mussolini? Who needs Stalin when you can, when, when you can justify anti-democratic, uh, this has got to be imposed on people whether they like it or not. You say this stuff and the co-eds, the co-eds at the college is they go, oh, it's so nice. He wants to save the planet by taking away democracy and all our rights and imposing on people something they don't want. Uh, this, this is the truth about the environmental movement, and they're getting less and less effective uh, at hiding it. Uh, not the earth is your mother. The earth is your Fuhrer, basically, is, is, would be the Thomas Friedman uh, bumper sticker. Why can't we be China?